Okay, let's get this show on the road. Thank you, welcome, welcome. Let me uh, tell you a little bit about me. This is actually my first time with Fine Center. So I'm so excited to be able to present to you all today. And so I welcome you here. Um, my name is Jatora Commodore and I am a transformational life coach and a mindfulness and meditation instructor. I am a stress management practitioner. I, uh, a couple of years ago, left my 20 year career <laughs> as an educator. And so I am now on this journey in, in serving and teaching in other ways. And so I am excited today to talk to you about what I call sacred serenity. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, but it's built around building a meditation practice to help calm the chaos in, in our lives. Um, right now, a lot of us may be feeling a lot of pressure, anxiety, maybe some depression, and uh, just worrying about everything that's been going on in, in our world. And a lot of us lead very busy lives. And so uh, we have to, or we, I don't like to use the word have to, <laughs> but you know, in pursuit of having more peace and calm in our lives and reducing some of that stress and overwhelm and even burnout, um, you know, meditation is a great tool for that. So I want to talk to you a bit about meditation today. Um, one of the reasons that I left my 20 year career in teaching was because I became burnt out. I uh, dealt with work related stress. And so I needed to find ways to support myself and, and bounce back. And meditation was one of those tools that I used and I use daily. So um, I just want to share that with the world and be able to offer some guidance with that. So let's get right into it. Um, I am going to share my screen. Um, actually, let's do a quick um, centering breathing activity. If you don't mind joining me, I invite you to just take some time to just settle in to wherever you are right now, whether it's in a chair, on the couch, on the floor, wherever it is, <laughs> in your bed, just get into a calm state and begin to gently close your eyes or you can have a soft gaze if closing your eyes is not comfortable for you. And begin to just tune in to your breath. Just as it is, just become aware of that breath, the inhale and the exhale. You're not forcing it. Not speeding it up or necessarily slowing it down. Just tune into it. Become aware. And if you feel so inclined, you can also put a hand over your uh, chest or your heart center and your belly and just feel the rise and the fall of the chest and the belly.
begin to feel a sense of release and letting go. Relaxing into it. Becoming aware of your surroundings. Just being here in this present moment. Now together, let's just take one big inhale in and then exhale out collectively. So let's take a long, slow, deep breath in. And then exhale. Exhale should be through the nose. Let's do that one more time. Inhaling through your nose. And this time you may exhale either through the nose or through the mouth. Exhaling completely. When you are ready, you may open up your eyes. So if you don't mind, or if you um, just take a moment to do a two word check-in, how did that make you feel? Use two words to describe it. If you'd like to, you can drop it in the chat um, or just keep that sense of being for yourself. And it's always good to just kind of check in with yourself at the beginning of your day, maybe sometimes if you, when you come home from work, just take some time to just breathe and relax and just do a check-in every, every now and then and just use two words to just describe how you're feeling in that moment and get some, um, to just work on some self-awareness and being attuned to how you are doing and how you're feeling. All right, so. I'm gonna share my screen now and get into the presentation. Um, all right. Oops, of course I stopped share. Did I stop the share? There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Trying to get to my other screen. There we go. Okay. So Sacred serenity, the benefits of building a meditation practice to calm the chaos. Um, again, to tell you a little bit uh, about me, I, I did not mention this. Um, I'm a certified unplugged meditation teacher. Um, actually received my meditation certification um, about a year ago. This week makes, makes a year. And so I've been teaching and doing a lot of work uh, around meditation with some in person as things have started to open up and um, also virtually online. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Unplug, but it's a wonderful, wonderful, um, they have an app, they have um, a center in California and it's a great, um, it's been really, really great to me. I've learned so much from um, 
gurus like David G. So a lot of what I share with you today will be through some of the things that I have learned as um, I have trained to become a certified meditation teacher. All right. So what is sacred serenity? Sacred serenity is something that I um, developed for myself um, because I needed to um, pause and connect to my inner calm. I was finding that I was so um, frazzled day to day, not sure how my day would go when I was going into work. And I became very anxious about going into work. Um, I didn't know how to um, connect. I didn't know how to just kind of stop and, and really take in my, the moments and the life and things that were going on around me. And so um, sacred serenity is a way to do that, to pause and connect to your inner calm, to find peace and serenity within yourself and to also create more joy and self-compassion by doing this. Um, and to really just be here now. Uh, we are so rushed in a lot of things that we, we do on a daily basis and we don't get those moments to really stop and you know have that quality time either with ourselves or with our family, with our family, with our spouse, um, with friends. And so really making sure that we're connecting in the, in the here and now. Um, one of the other things that makes um, this sacred, so to speak, is you make it your own. Everyone's practice is going to look different. What everyone needs to experience calm, inner calm, or serenity, or joy uh, is very different for everyone. And so um, I like, I hope that during this presentation, you also find ways where you pull the things that you know you need and discard what doesn't apply to you or what, you, what doesn't serve you, but um, learn ways to kind of make this sacred seren serenity your own. I first want to talk about what meditation isn't. So um, meditation can be used as a tool and I'm, I'm not really going to get into the history of meditation because, um, it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and especially if you're beginning to learn one of, one of my objectives is to make, um, meditation simple and practical for people to practice. And so I'm pulling those elements from meditation that are. Um, so meditation is not um, a technique or tool to stop your thoughts. Some people sit down and meditate and they feel like, I can't do this, it's too hard, I can't stop the thoughts. It's really not to stop yourself from thinking, it's to quiet those fluctuations in your mind. It's finding ways to be aware of your thoughts, but then bring yourself back to center, bring yourself back to um, a focus. And that might be your breath. It might be um, a mantra or affirmation that you repeat over and over again. It might be an object that you look at. So we're not trying to stop all of our thoughts um, completely. Um, it's not a religion or a cult, whereas it is practiced definitely in so many different religions, but it's not that you have to be of a religion to practice meditation, right? Um, 
it is not something you need to sit completely still for. Sometimes while I'm meditating, if I have to scratch my head, I scratch my head. If I have to move and shift, comfort is really important in meditation. So it, you don't necessarily have to um, sit completely still and you could do yoga meditation. You could do walking meditations. So there's other types of meditation as well where you're not um, sitting. You don't necessarily have to sit crisscross ap applesauce. <laughs> I get that of course from saying it to my students. Um, it's also not something you need to practice for hours on end, especially if you're just starting a practice, you're not going into it trying to sit and meditate for 30 minutes to an hour. Um, it is called a practice for a reason because you actually need to build up to that. We are not, even though we are built to um be able to be in stillness and quiet we um are not it's not in our nature or, or tendency we have to almost learn it uh to to be able to do that so um you know you're going to learn today about building up to a practice um and it doesn't it's not about you living a particular lifestyle like um you don't have to become a monk um, you know, some people will say, oh, well, you are, you know, they call um, people who meditate, uh, you know, they are tree huggers or they're granola, you know, they eat granola bars and they shop at Whole Foods all the time. Um, and that's not necessarily true at all. You don't have to live this certain lifestyle to, to meditate. Um, everyone and anyone can meditate, right? So with that said, let's talk about what meditation is. So at its core, meditation essentially is the practice of disconnecting from daily distractions and experiencing the present moment. It's basically what you're doing. It's becoming aligned and centered with, one, with yourself and connecting to God, source, spirit, um, whatever you believe, universe, whatever you believe in, whoever you believe in. Um, it is a tool or technique for practicing inner peace and self-awareness and connecting to the stillness and the silence within you. So this is all about um, honing a, a practice for yourself where you start to become aware of yourself, connect to yourself, be a more aware of your surroundings, practice a mindfulness, so to speak, where you're being in um, a state of the present moment and you're only focusing on that. You're not thinking about the past because that creates um, you know, sadness and depression. You're not worrying about the future um, because that creates worry and anxiety. You're just being here now and taking that time. So here are some other benefits of meditation. Meditation clears your mind. It frees it from, um, you know, like I said, the disorder of everyday living. Uh, sometimes we have we have actually 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts per day. So imagine how much your mind is constantly, constantly working and flowing and, and you know, and shifting gears and, and all of that. And so giving yourself that time to just slow down for a bit and give your brain a break, right, um, is a really a great way to create some uh, serenity and peace for yourself helps you to stay calm. I've said this um, and be in the present moment. Um, so now I would like for us to practice what I call or what is called the infinity breath. So again, get yourself just relaxed. I'm just going to play this again. It is no sound or anything. I just want to give a visual of what it looks like. So basically the infinity breath 
is a way to start to bring your your mind to some calmness and um, to bring down, maybe if you're at a, a heightened sense of anxiety, it's really just creating a continuous flow of breath between your, um, in and out of your nose. So we're not going to be breathing out through our mouth. And I just want to tell you, if you are very new to this, give yourself some grace, try it out. Again, it's called a practice for a reason, right? Because you have to do this several times. It's not that you can't, we can all learn to do this. Um, and you, so you don't, ever want to inhale through your mouth, you always want to inhale through your nose. Your exhale can be through your nose or your mouth, whichever is comfortable. For the infinity breath, it is easier to do that flow back and forth easily um, through your nose. Okay, so inhale through our nose and out through our mouth. And basically, you're going to either in your mind or sometimes I even just like to trace like I'm making an infinity symbol. And so we're going to inhale. And at the top of your inhale, you're going to then bring out the exhale. So you're going to bring the breath out. And as soon as you completely exhale, you're gonna bring that inhale right back in. So you're not stopping and holding it, but you're, you know, you're making this continuous flow. So I'm breathing in. And you could go as fast or as slow as you'd like. I wouldn't say to go, like that <laughs> at the begin at, at the beginning there's a, a special way to do a, a quicker breath in that way but you know you don't have to necessarily go really really slow or you can go as slow you know as you want and just trace that so I'm gonna give you a few seconds to to just try that out on your own I'm gonna just play this so you keep an eye visual you can close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open and you can even visual it in your mind. So I don't know if you was looking at it. And then like when you close your eyes, if you saw the, the shape, I know when I, I just saw the shape in my, in, my, um, in my mind when I close my eyes. And then just follow that. All right. So let's move on to the next page. All right. So to meditate is to inspire positive emotions. Um, if we have time at the end, I want to do another meditation with you. And it's a loving kindness meditation, bringing in some love and self-compassion to yourself. And when we practice that more and more and more for ourselves, then we can be, you know, that becomes the catalyst for, you know, being kind and extending that to other people. All right. Meditation helps you to focus more, helps keep for you to keep a focused mind, helps you to be more creative. I know sometimes if I'm working for a long period of time, um, there are times I need to stop and take a break and just give myself some time to um, just, you know, breathe and relax and kind of clear my head and, and reconnect and I can, you know, get that second win. Um, all right. Um, as far as, you know, additional reasons to, to meditate. Some of us don't know of the scientific benefits that there are with um, meditation. Okay. Um, working, increasing your capacity to learn. 
you, um, meditation boosts our alpha brain waves and aid our ability to learn, to memorize, to store brand new information. And um, that could be at any age when we, you know, create a consistent practice. So there are many scientific studies out there and um, studies have shown that a regular practice of meditation can physically change the structure of the brain in as little as eight weeks. So um, there's a few studies, I won't go into all of them, but there is one study by um, scientist, her name is Sarah Lazar, and she did a study um, where she took people through um, an eight week program and they practiced meditation daily for, um, for 12 minutes and they, you know, came back and she did this study and shown that the, um, there was a deep uh, increase in the area of the brain where, um, you know, you feel a sense of happiness and um, heightened sense of joy and relaxation and a decrease in the gray matter in the amygdala, which is the area of um, fear and anxiety or that flight, you know, fight flight response that we, that we have as well. All right, so now I want to do another um, meditation with you quickly. Just another breathing practice. Give me one second while I just check on my time here. Okay. And let's go back to present. Unfortunately, it does not show me my, my time. Okay. All right, so 16 seconds to clarity. So basically what, um, what I want you to do, I'm gonna show you like, I'm gonna just tell you how to do it. You'll keep your eyes open and then we'll try it again. You'll close your eyes, okay? So we're gonna take four um, second breaths. We're gonna do four rounds. And um, with that, it's going to be as simple as an inhale, bringing it in, watching the breath go down into your belly, bringing it back up and exhaling out. And that can be either through your nose or your mouth, okay? So we're gonna breathe in for four, inhale through your nose for four. And watch that breath go down into your belly and then begin to bring it back up and exhale, letting it out completely. And holding it there. All right, we're going to try that again. All right, so we're gonna do four seconds in. The four seconds that you're like, it's coming in and the breath is going down to your belly, that's four. And then you're kind of like watching it come up. It seems a little lower when, longer when I explain it, but it's 16 seconds, so it's, it's pretty quick, all right? All right, so let's do that together. So you're gonna inhale and talk it. I'm gonna do it to the count of four. Watch that breath go down the throat, down to the belly. Watch it come back up. And exhale for the count of four. All right, let's try that again. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Down to the belly, two, three, four. Back up to exhale, two, three, four. And exhaling and letting it out, two, three, four. Okay. 
Now I want us to try that by thinking of something that upset you maybe today or made you feel uncomfortable or maybe you you might be going through something with uh, a loved one. Think of something that may have bothered you today. Could have been maybe someone cut you off in traffic, maybe something happened at work. Just think about that for a second. Just close your eyes and kind of play that in your mind. And now I want you to try the 16 seconds to clarity on your own. How did that feel? Did you think about that thing that bothered you? My hopes is that you didn't. The purpose is so that you find a pattern interrupt. You don't, um, so that when things like that come up and they bother you, you could take that few seconds to just stop and just breathe and pause and reflect and then you know go back um and just maybe you could deal with whatever the situation is in a better way um one of the things that meditation can do it when practiced consistently is things don't bother you as much as they used to it's not that they don't bother you, let me re rephrase that. But, you know, you, you have a better way of dealing with those things. You don't react um, as quickly. You take that moment to like stop and, and pause and really think about what's going on, um, which leads me to the stop um, meditation. It's, it's perfect for when you're in the middle of a busy day, you can stop and reset and refocus. It's when you are in a heightened state of anxiety or um, something is, is not going very well for you. Um, it's helping you. So the S is for stop. You take um, a few seconds to just breathe, take some breaths. It could be one, two, three, four breaths. I also like to do what I call the um, hand, um, breathing across your hand, so, or the five finger breathing. So basically what you're doing is just taking a few seconds to inhale as you go up your finger and then exhaling as you go down, then take another breath, inhale, and then exhale, and then inhale, and then exhale. And I think you get the gist, you, <laughs> you know, inhale and exhale and, and try that. And that can be, again, either through your nose or through your mouth. Sometimes we need to take those like deep breaths in. A lot of times I like to say inhale deeply, exhale completely. Inhale deeply, exhale completely. Okay. So we, we stop, we, we reflect, we, um, and we take that, that pause, that break to really think about um, what's going on and how you're feeling in that moment to really deal with those emotions.
All right, moving right along. So the when, the where, and the what of a meditation. This is very quick, simple. Um, not going to go too far into it. But um, when are the best times to meditate? Where can you meditate? And what do you need to meditate? So let's talk about the when. Meditating is done in, um, best done in the morning when you wake. So while there are, um, there are benefits and there are studies to waking up earlier and having, um, you know, like when the sun rises or, you know, and that's mainly what it is more so like when the, um, during those, those peak times. So sometimes it's five or six in the morning and you're probably like, well, look, I am not getting up at that time. That's okay. If you get up at nine o'clock, meditate at nine o'clock. Um, I have created a morning routine for myself. And so I do get up a little bit earlier so I can have that me time, that alone time. And I practice um, four to five things in the mornings, depending on the amount of time that I have. And meditation is always one of them. I, I do that daily. Um, sometimes my meditation practice is um, a little shorter than um, I'd like it to be, but I'm always making sure that I make time for it. Um, I noticed that it really starts my day off on a positive note. It really helps me to just clear my mind. I'm not jumping up to rush and get in the shower and I got to get ready and get the kids ready and, and all of that. I'm taking that time to just kind of like stop and pause and reflect and connect and, and all of that. And I've noticed my day goes so much better when I do that. Um, there is a, a, a term coined by David G, which he calls RPM. Um, as a way to remember. So just as we get up in the morning and we make it a habit of brushing our teeth and doing our hair, um, trying to make meditation a daily habit is not an easy thing. Um, it took me a while. I was a crisis meditator for a really long time, which is um, I only meditated when things started to get, you know, really stressful for me. But um in all honesty, a lot of the benefits of meditation is outside of the practice itself. So you will find that, um, you know, as you continue to create that consistent uh, practice for yourself, you'll just feel a lot calmer. You'll see it in different areas of, of your life. Uh, so he calls this RPM, he says, get up, rise, go pee because normally when we get up we got to pee and then meditate whether you want to do it in a separate space you can come back sit in the bed if you want sit up against your bed headboard and just pull the covers up and meditate for five minutes do not hit the snooze button that five minutes of snooze does nothing for you because your levels of serotonin there have gone down once the light hits and you wake up and you open your eyes so just use that time to just meditate that gives so much more benefits than hitting that snooze button and thinking you're actually getting some good five minutes of sleep um and build up to two times a day if possible so you could do morning and night you could do morning and when you come home you can do when you come home at night time um, but start off with one time of day that you feel is most comfortable for you, all right? Where meditating can be any and everywhere. Um, in a park, in a class, virtually we're doing it now. At work, there were so many times where during my lunch break, I would either do a walking meditation or I would before... Um, the kids would come back. I would have a few minutes of just quiet and peace time for myself and did a meditation at my desk, um, on the couch, in your bed, at the beach, 
Um, I've done a meditation in my car before I found myself one day just rushing from appointment to appointment. And I just needed to stop and give myself some time to just relax because I felt, you know, um, the anxiety just kind of um, rushing up and just kind of feeling a little bit frazzled. So I just took some time in my car and I sat for five or 10 minutes and, and did a meditation. So being in the habit is really key. You want to go for consistency over duration. So I don't care if you are meditating for one minute, five minutes a day to start. Start somewhere. Start there if you have to. Start where you are and slowly build up your practice to 20 to 30 minutes a day. And that 20 or 30 minutes a day can be broken up into two parts of your day. Um, as you get into more of a practice and you practice over a really long time, you may be able to extend that past 30 minutes um, to 45 minutes to an hour. Um, that is not always necessarily the goal of meditation. So do not feel like if you can't get to an hour, just yet, or it takes you some time, that that's not an end goal, right? Um, it's the consistency that you build for yourself and everyone's meditation practice is, again, gonna look different, gonna feel different. Um, some people are gonna see different things, feel different things, have different connections, um, and you need to be okay with it. There's no wrong way to meditate. Um, you sitting down to start the practice, you've already done something right. Already right there. You're already stopping and pausing and connecting. Um, and so that's the great thing. So remember that. Um, you can start with a few minutes of your day and build up maybe each week, add a minute onto where you feel like you can start from. Okay. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm at the end of the presentation. So <laughs> um, meditation in daily life, make it quick, simple, and practical. Everyone's practice, I've said this several times, <laughs> um, will be unique and make that for yourself. Um, whatever it is that you may, um, whatever it is that you may need for yourself, I'm actually going to stop the uh, um stop the share and hopefully I'll be back on yes I am um and so you know making it what is suitable for you and what is um what is going to make you come back to it you know, try those, those things out for your, for yourself. Um, I do give uh, meditation classes and, and I do courses. I do things over eight weeks to help build um, a practice. And so uh, if you are ever interested in that, I have ways that you can connect to me. Actually, you will be receiving an email from Fine Center with some information, the recording, some information on ways to connect with me. And um, if you have any questions, always please feel free to reach out to me as well through um, email, message me. You can follow me on different social media platforms. Um, and with that said, if anyone has um, any questions or, um, you know, if you're here live and you want to drop them in the chat, uh, you can do that. Uh, my, my goal is really just to help people understand the benefits of meditation and what it really can do for us to help um, as a tool, you know, it's 
not necessarily a, a cure for all things, but I will tell you when it was when I'd stop meditating that I realized how much I needed it. So even though I was starting to build a consistent practice, it wasn't until it was like, I missed a day and I was just, or two, and I was like, oh my gosh, something feels off. So I am hoping that you will bring um, something that you learned here today, you know, into your own practice. Um, Some of the things we talked about were, you know, building your, your very own practice and starting off small, right? Um, you can practice it anywhere. If you are not able to do it at home, find a, a place outside, find a local uh, class that you can join. Um, and doing some different things that will, will help you in, in your journey with meditation as well. We learned the different breaths. So we did the infinity breath. We did the 16 um, seconds to clarity. We did, uh, we did the, um, the five finger breath. There's so many other techniques, of course, as well. Um, I will also with your email, you'll be getting just a little sheet with a little bit of a recap and a couple of exercises that you can, you can do. Um, I see there's a question here. Um, Oh, great, great, great. Um, Yes, there are, I have so much more information on um, the effects of the brain in um, the psychological manner. And um, maybe that's another, you know, another presentation I can give because with the time, I really did want to share those things because I had three studies that I wanted to talk more about. But um, I would love to maybe come back and, and talk about the psychological um, effects and the effects that it has on your brain, because there's a lot of research and studies out there. So thank you for that. Um, and you know, you can also reach out to me. I can give you some information directly um, with that as well, just with time and us us wrapping up right now, I I, I wouldn't be able to go into it with with the justice <laughs> that um, that I'd like to to give to it. So um, I will definitely remember that as you know more information to to give because there is something there's so much more in in regards to the the brain aspect of it, body, mind, and spirit. It's, it's meditation works and helps with all of that in so many different ways. So um, thank you. All right. So with that said, I would love to do a closing meditation with you all. I want to thank you for being here with me. Um, Let's get ourselves into a, um, Comfortable position (laughs) yet again. And I want you to begin as you begin to close your eyes or have a gentle gaze down to the floor or straight ahead. Just begin to tune into that breath again. Becoming more aware. I invite you to put your hands over your heart center, if you'd like. And let's take a long, slow, deep breath in. And exhale out. That exhale should be a bit longer than the inhale. 
Let's do that again. Long, slow, deep breath in. Inhale deeply. And exhale completely. Now bring your awareness back to your breath. The one thing that's really important to remember is that your mind will wander. That is what your brain's job is to do, just like your heart's job is to be. Your mind is constantly thinking. And so when your mind starts to wander, acknowledge it, notice, and just come back to the breath. Don't engage, don't sit down and have tea with it. Just bring it back to the breath. Even if that breath or the focus on the breath lasts for a second, it's okay. It'll begin to get longer and longer the more you practice. I now would like you to think of one thing that you are grateful for in this moment, big or small. It could be as simple as you being able to sit down and have your cup of coffee this morning or tea. You felt good about going into work today. Someone smiled at you. It could be big as a promotion you're getting. Maybe a new relationship that you found. Whatever it is, just lean into that for a second. let's bring our attention and focus back to our breath. I wanted to begin to breathe in some gentle love and kindness to ourselves. Acknowledging yourself for showing up today whether it's live or you're watching the recording, you showed up, you took the time for you, and you took the time for your own personal development and growth. As you inhale, feel the breath down in the heart and as you exhale just float that love right back out into the universe let's do that again inhale In this thought of love and kindness, and then exhaling and breathing it out to the world. We're going to do that one more time, and on your exhale this time, think of someone, something, some place, whatever it might be. Send that love and kindness out to a particular person or place or group of people.
believing that we can share love in so many different ways and collectively how much we are sharing love with the world as we do this together. So with that said, let's take one final deep collective breath in. And this time, let it out through your mouth. You could do a big sigh if you want. Exhale completely, letting out love into the world. Sending it to whoever needs it. And when you are ready, you may open your eyes. I thank you so much for joining me today. I have so much gratitude to Fine Center for um, allowing me to share this with the world. The benefits of meditation, having some sacred surrender. Have questions. I am here. That is what I am called to do and how I'm called to serve. And so I look forward to helping and um, being here often. All right. Bye for now.